students welcome to physics lab today we will be performing one experiment to find the refractive index of water using a convex lens and a plane mirror in this experiment there are different concepts and we need to learn them first in order to understand the experiment so let us learn the concepts of this experiment first concept it is called as auto collimation method this is the concept is the main concept for example you know that we are taking a convex lens and a plane mirror at a distance d from the plane mirror i keep the convex lens now this is the principal axis of the convex lens on this principal axis there is a focal point or focus if i keep the object at the focal point or focus let me call this f1 and i draw a ray of light so an object is here ray of light which is coming out from this say one ray in such a way that it comes out parallel why because it is at the focal point the ray will come out parallel it falls normally on the plane mirror and is reflected back so it is reflected back in the same direction on this side also i can show on this side also i can show this line and it comes out again and comes back to this position so we know very well when the object is at focus we get parallel line coming out of the convex lens this method of finding the focal length of the convex lens is called as auto collimation method so let's learn how to find the focal length of the convex lens so concept number 2 we are now finding the focal length of the convex lens so what i do is i keep the plane mirror on the red dot step i keep it here and this is my plane mirror you know that this is a mirror surface and on top of it i keep the convex lens i keep the convex lens on top of it on top of the mirror now what happens is we are going to we have a stand here so there is there is an object object pane so you will see that the ray of light falls on this falls in such a way that it has to fall normal to the plane mirror and if it has to fall normal to the plane mirror the object should be placed at the focus so we can find the parallel remove the parallax and get the image at this point if i get the image at this point this distance from here to here is the focal length and let me call it f1 let me call it f1 so this part is clear to you so how to remove the parallax i already explained in the last experiment and you must you will just click the link in the description box and find the information about it now let me find out some do some calculations you already know what is lens maker's formula What is the lens maker maker's formula? One upon f is mu minus one into one upon r one plus one upon r two. You know this. By the way, what is r one? R one is the radius of curvature of the first surface. And what is r two? Radius of curvature of the second surface. All these concepts we have learnt in optics. Now, in this case, this particular glass, this particular lens. It made of glass, and what is the refractive index of glass? Refractive index of glass is one point five. You know that, and the focal length of this given convex lens is f one. So I write here f one, and then I write here one upon f one. I just introduce one point five here. Now one more thing, r one and r two by convex lens r one is equal to r two. Radius of curvature of this surface is equal to radius of This surface. So if it is same, then I can write this particular value also as R one. So we get point five into two by R one. So one point five minus one, I can write it as point five, which is half. So I can cancel this. So we get one upon f one is equal to one upon R one. And if one upon f one is equal to one upon R one, we get an important uh, this point. F one is equal to R one. Have you seen this relationship? 
So this is true only for the lens which is made of glass. If we use any this particular material is not glass and whose refractive index is not 1.5 then this is not true. So it is not true for any other material whose any other material whose refractive index is not 1.5. So it is only true for 1.5 refractive index. So this is the first step we got. So let me rub it out and let me do the second part. So what is the first part we got? We got that F1 is equal to R1. This we derived. Now what I do, I redraw this diagram and this is my convex lens. This is my convex lens. This is the plane mirror. This is the plane mirror. And we all know that. Now what we are going to do? Remove the lens. Put some droplets of water. A thin layer of water on top of the plane mirror. And keep the convex lens on top of it. So here. We put water. Here we put water. And if we put water here. What will happen? We have created one more lens. Can you see this? Now there are two lenses. One lens is the convex lens and another lens is like this. Plano concave lens. Why it is called plano concave lens? One side is plain, another side is concave. Therefore, it's a plano concave liquid lens. So this is what we got. Again, again we keep the object. We keep the object here and we move the parallax. And when we remove the parallax, we are removing parallax and getting the focal length once again and that focal length what we get is capital F. What is it? Focal length of the combination of two lenses. Look here. This is the convex lens. This is the planar concave lens. Its combination focal length is F. Now remember one thing. When we combine these two it becomes again a convex lens only. This is the convex lens because on top is a convex lens. So this combination also becomes a con convex lens. We can find the focal length again by using auto collimation method. So again we have to move the object in such a way that object pin and the image move together. And we find that this particular F, here we got F1 and we are getting above that capital F. That means Focal length of the combination is greater than focal length of the convex lens. We need to prove it. Let's prove. So we'll prove that. We know very well. We have studied in theory. 1 upon F. That is the focal length of the combination. Is 1 upon F1 plus 1 upon F2. Now tell me what is F1? F1 is the focal length of the given convex lens made of glass. And what is F2? It is the focal length of the Plano concave liquid lens. Remember that. This is the second part. So we can. Now there is one more uh, idea. We have to see. We all know the sign conventions. Focal length of the convex lens is taken as positive. And focal length of the concave lens is taken as negative. This is our sign convention. So that means F1 is positive. F2 is negative. So I can always write this F1 minus the point and then I want to find F. So then what I have to do is I want to find F2 because F1 now we know. F we know. So this is my unknown. So I can write it like this 1 upon F2 I take it this side is 1 upon F1 minus 1 upon. No. One more thing I have to tell you which I will tell you first. The question was this F is greater than F1. Why? Look here. 1 upon F is a number we get when we subtract 1 upon F2 from 1 upon F1. That means that 1 upon F is a smaller number than 1 upon 1 upon F is a smaller number than 1 upon F1. So from here 1 upon F is less than 1 upon F1. If that is true, this implies F is greater than F1. This also is another concept which we learn here. Third concept, F is greater than F1. 
is the third concept we learned. Have you got it? So we have got this concept. Now what I do? I want to I want to write the formula for F two. So I'll write here one upon F two is <coughs> one upon C one upon capital F is equal to one upon F one minus one upon F two. So what I do is I take one upon F two this side. So one upon F two is equal to one upon F one minus one upon F. This is what we get, and then we get the formula F two is equal to F into F one upon F minus F one. This is what we get. This is the calculation. This is what we get. This is done. Now we know what is F two. We know what is F one, and you know very well F. We know we have found out F one. Also, we have found out first method and second method, so we can easily find F two. Now we have to use the lens makers formula for F two, and we have to find the refractive index. So what is the lens lens makers formula for plano concave lens? Is equal to mu minus one into one upon r one plus one upon r two. It's very interesting now. Now you have to tell me. Think about it. Mu I don't know. We have to find out. That is the aim of the experiment. R one. What is R one of the this particular lens? This R one is same as R one of convex lens. So R one remains same. Whereas this side it is R two. R two of this plane mirror is infinite. Therefore I can put here infinity. And one upon infinity is nothing but one upon infinity is what? Nothing but zero. So we get. One upon f two is equal to mu minus one, mu minus one upon r one, and we want to find mu. Modify this, and we get mu minus one is equal to r one upon f two, and therefore mu is equal to one plus r one upon f two. We get this, and now very interesting. But what is R one? R one is the radius of curvature of the convex lens, which is equal to this. We already derived it. So instead of R one, I can put here F one. Remember, this is only true for glass, and not for any other material whose refractive index is other than one point five. This you have to note down, and we get this very easy experiment. We found the refractive index of water. Now we have to go to the laboratory. Perform the experiment. So, in the laboratory, we will find out the refractive index of water. You, I am sure, you have found the experiment concept very, very interesting. So, in we need to know the concept very well. If you want to know how to perform the experiment, you have to click the link in the description box of this experiment, and then you have to perform the experiment. Physics is easy and interesting. Thank you. See you once again in the next session.